Hey everybody and welcome back to another pregnancy video. Today I'm going to be doing week 27 and week 28 combined and the reason for that is I was out of town and um, we were like all over the place. We were in Ohio and all over and so if I wanted to do my week 27 update I would have had to do it from a hotel room or like a school classroom and I didn't want to do that for my videos. Now, granted, this setting probably isn't much better. What's wrong, Maddie? <clears throat> anyway, something that has happened since doing my last video is that we are no longer giving our oldest daughter, Madeline, a nap anymore, which is why my background is my kitchen and I have done nothing to make myself look presentable because it has been quite the struggle with that. Um, I usually do all of my sit down videos on nap time or I have time to like take a shower, do my hair, do makeup, all kinds of things and make myself look a little bit more presentable to you guys. But right now we are not getting nap times. We're not getting good nights sleep. I'm working 40 hours a week. Things are Hectic. So with week 27 and week 28, things started getting a little bit crazy. We're now hitting the third trimester, which is exciting and terrifying and all of the above. <laughs> but along with that, I've been telling you guys that things start to get a little crazy towards the end of my pregnancy. And so week 28 did not disappoint as far as the things that have decided to happen. I am now having my hip pain really bad like really 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 bad to the point where I sometimes need help standing up if I'm sitting down on like a chair or on the sofa I have to sit down in order to put pants on so like if I'm taking a shower I have to sit down on the toilet or on the side of the tub or something to put my pants on because I cannot do it while standing I have a hard time like walking in general Stairs are very difficult. Going downstairs is actually more difficult than going upstairs. I am now on weight and lift restrictions, which is really hard when you have two toddlers and a two level house and you work from home and you're home by yourself all day, almost every day of the week. And we had what I guess you would call a preterm labor scare. Going into it, I didn't believe that I was in labor, but I had been having contractions five minutes apart for over two hours. And by the time I actually um, got to the hospital, it had been three hours of nonstop contractions every five minutes. Um, they weren't super strong or anything like that. Um, and considering that I had my last baby in four hours from start to finish, I knew that like two hours into it that like things weren't getting worse, that I was not going to be having a baby that day. I wasn't in preterm labor, so nothing was probably happening. I'm actually having a contraction right now, which is just fantastic. Um, and so we ended up having to go to the hospital to do some non-stress tests because since I've been having contractions for so long, they need to make sure that the baby is okay. And they also wanted to run some tests just to make sure that my cervix wasn't shortening or softening or anything like that, um, which it wasn't. So that is really good. Um, it was not a fun experience. I can tell you that much. Um, having contractions in general, not fun at all, but I am still having them. It has been, what day did I go in? It's been like, I wanna say five-ish days now since the whole thing started. I am still having contractions. I have them about every 30 minutes to every five minutes apart. Um, and they're not like super strong. They're just really annoying. One thing that's kind of started to happen in the past two weeks is I've started to break out really bad. So like, I don't know if you guys can see like on my chin, um, like all under here on my chin and like up like right in this area is all really bad You can probably also tell like I'm not wearing like a bunch of makeup or anything like that But you can probably tell that like my skin isn't doing too hot um, And my hair of course is like this is like postpartum hair pregnancy hair This is like the real truth behind having a baby um, I always lose a lot of hair while I'm pregnant 
and then it like kind of grows in and then I lose more hair after I have the baby and now having three back-to-back -back kids I've got like these little random layers of just different layers of things going on with my hair and so I can't wait to see what it looks like after I have this baby and I lose even more hair. Luckily there's still hair here, it's just really hard to manage. But yeah, my skin, is, and it's like so dry, like my skin is flaky and dry and like it's disgusting but like if I go like scratch my forehead and like I was looking down once I like scratch my forehead and you just see like the flakes fall off of your skin super gross but it's like at the same time I don't know what to do about it my skin's super sensitive so I don't really have a lot of moisturizing products that I can use I do use the Fox Brim products they're all vegan natural um, super great for um, like sensitive irritated skin so I will use that but like it's just dry and gross and my hands are horrible um, all of the eczema that I had at the beginning of the pregnancy has totally resurfaced. I don't even know if you can see like, if you can see how dry my hands are. I don't know, you probably can't tell. Um, but like you can see like right here, like how that's super dry and cracked and like my knuckles are really dry. Um, it's just like my skin's super rough and I don't like it at all. And there's not a whole lot I can do for that either at the moment. There's not a lot of products out there that either A, work for me or B, that I'm not allergic to. So it's just kind of, have to deal with it for now. I can't remember if I talked about my glucose test in the previous video, but I did go for my glucose test, which the ratings or the numbers that I got back at first were not correct. And so it looked like I had failed, like really, really badly failed. Like I was going to need insulin and all kinds of stuff. And then like the numbers got switched or something, I don't know. And everything ended up coming back fine. But we had like a day of like mass panic that I was going to die because of how bad my insulin levels were or my glucose levels were. So that was fun, not, not great at all. Um, I still am not really gaining much weight. I've gained a little bit now with this whole like being on extra protein, the protein shakes and bars and all kinds of things I've gained a little bit, but like at the same time, the baby is growing and getting bigger and my belly is growing and getting bigger. So am I really gaining weight weight or am I just gaining baby and uterus and placenta? Like wh where's like the, the fine line between like weight gain and that like water weight, baby weight kind of thing that happens. I haven't been having any food aversions or cravings again. I was kind of really into like gummies, like fruit snacks. I was really liking them. And I went through like a box of 40 fruit snacks in a week. And then I haven't had any since. So I don't know if it's just, they were really good at the time or if it was a pregnancy craving. But right now I just like, I don't want anything. And it's honestly hard for me to think of the things that I want to eat because I just a lot of the times don't feel like eating. And so with this whole not gaining any weight and having to eat so much, it's really, really hard because I have to force myself to eat, but I don't really want anything to eat. And so ugh, it's just awesome. I can't really think of anything else to update you guys on. I feel like that's about it. The baby is the size of an eggplant and weighs about 2.2 pounds as of now. Mine measures a little bit small. I do have an inverted uterus and so it tilts back a little bit and I always end up measuring really small. Um, but the baby itself was in like the 36th or something percentile the last time I had an ultrasound. I am due back to have another ultrasound at 36 weeks because I am high risk with hypertension. So they need to make sure that the cord and the placenta are doing okay due to high blood pressure. But my blood pressure hasn't been high at all this pregnancy. So things are kind of like all up in the air as far as that goes. But even if my blood pressure stays low, regardless if it's like perfect or not, I still have to be induced a week early, which will be on June 22nd. So if you're watching this video and you want to see more about this baby, come back 
and subscribe, hit the like button, let me know that you're here, leave me a comment down below, and come back on June 22nd because we'll be having a baby. <laughs> anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.